Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, thank you guys again for just allowing me to come up and, you know, kind of talk about maps and stuff for a little while. Uh, it, you know, just kind of following the conference along on, uh, on social media and everything, it seems like you guys have a really interesting group of um, practitioners that have come together and are really solving really interesting problems in the science space. And as someone who's married a geologist myself, uh, I can kind of relate to some of those problems, at least, at least secondhand. Uh, so hopefully we can kind of go through and, uh, and figure out some of the things that um, have been kind of plaguing you with that. Uh, so during the introductions, um, it sounded like uh, a lot of people, maybe about half the room, were sort of familiar with Drupal, but not really. Uh, is that fairly accurate? Cool. So why don't we why don't we start by doing the uh, elevator pitch for Drupal, um, because that's that's a good place to start. So Drupal is a content management. You can call it a system or a framework um, that is really good at um, creating and managing information that has lots of extra metadata associated with it. And so in Drupal, we consider those things nodes. Um, and a node is like the main source of content on a site, uh, on, on your particular site. And on each node, you can have uh, fields. And so fields are basically the metadata that's associated with that. So um, one of the really cool things about Drupal is that there is a very, very large community of uh, people that have created third-party uh, modules that you can let you do all kinds of interesting stuff with that data. So we have a... Um, like we have a visual query language model or module called views, which is like amazing because like writing SQL, you know, requires you to really be a developer. But if you have something um, like views, you can, you know, ask questions to Drupal, like show me all the pieces of content on the site um, that are tagged this particular piece of information uh, that were posted on a Tuesday um, that have Star Trek associated with it, you know, something like that. Uh, there's uh, a lot of modules for tying into lots of different third-party systems. Um, if you want to kind of put it in the realm of what other systems are, are like, um, it's more complicated than WordPress. It's less complicated than like a pure framework like a Django or a, uh, what's another good framework? Uh, so Symfony uh, is, or Cake PHP or something like that. Um, so it, it's, it, it sits in this kind of sweet spot where it's really easy to get a site up and running that doesn't require a lot of code. Um, that nor in m many, many other systems, you would probably have to code something together to get that kind of information. I mean, Drupal core by itself, you can create you know, various pieces of content that have you know, dates, locations, um, various types of tagging and taxonomy, and you know, create all kinds of diff interesting um, views and listings of it, and you know you don't have to touch a bit of code. And that's, that's actually really, really cool. Um, just you know, in, uh, from that standpoint. Um, so I mean, that's kind of a high level on Drupal. And then outside of that, um, so what we're here to talk about is uh, mapping and data viz. Um, so when we're working through that, um, what I'm gonna talk about today are, is one of the many stacks of modules that you can use in Drupal uh, to do mapping with, within it. Uh, I'm going to talk about some tools um, that kind of address some of the shortcomings, or shortcomings, some of the um, blind spots in Drupal uh, for doing mapping work and that kind of thing. Kind of, kind of run through a list of a few different types of toolings and things like that. Uh, and then we're going to come back and kind of talk a little bit about uh, what would it take to uh, expand Drupal to be a little bit more flexible with especially the kinds of data sets that you're probably working with from on a day-to-day -day basis as you know, scientific uh, practitioners and IT uh, support on that. Uh, so yeah. Uh, this is the Drupal mapping stack that I think works really well. Uh, so this is a set of modules. So modules, again, are just you know, uh, sets of code that extend the functionality of Drupal. Uh, GeoField and GeoPHP is the data storage module for that. Um, I'm pretty partial to that because I've been maintaining it for about two and a half years now. Uh, it's uh, very, very flexible. It allows you to store um, you know, points, lines, and polygons. So pretty much anything that you would see in a shapefile, you can you you have access to that. Um, 
it's um, it's pretty bare bones on its own, um, but has a lot of good uh, connections to other Drupal modules that um, that can take advantage of the data set. So like Geo, GeoField in particular, its primary focus is we want to store geospatial data in Drupal really, really well. And then all the other modules can do whatever they want with that. Uh, Geocoder is a module that basically allows you to take things like um, you know, I want to find out where Copper Mountain, Colorado is on a map. Um, you know, we're blessed to have things like Google Maps where you can just type it into a search and it'll find it for you. But if, you, if you're trying to do that on your own, uh, you know, most mapping software doesn't actually know what that is. So geocoding is the process of converting something like a um, string of Copper Mountain, Colorado into the coordinates that actually get rendered on the map. Um, geocoder uh, will um, plug into a wide variety excuse me, of systems. Um, you know, you can take advantage of um, Google's uh, geocoding software, Bing is another one, uh, OpenStreetMap uh, is another one. OpenStreetMap's a really interesting thing, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, but like that's large database of geospatial information that's crowdsourced, so. Uh, that's Is there any, can I ask a quick, quick question? Absolutely. So you, so the basic of, of the idea behind geocode is that you give it a string and it, it uses some mechanism to figure out where that is on a map. Yeah. So that gives you the coordinates of that. So you know, if I say Chicago, Illinois, it'll give me uh, 41 north and negative 86-ish. I used to give this presentation a lot in Chicago, so it's, <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, so it, it gives you that those coordinates back. Yeah, cool. And how does it do that? Is there like a library that, you, that is downloaded to that has that algorithm, or I'm just curious? Sure, uh, so uh, Geocoder relies primarily on um, third-party APIs. Um, so there's a very lightweight library that's um, kind of baked into the Geocoder module that um, will basically, it's, it's basically a wrapper around all these different API calls. So it, ping, it asks Google, hey, where's Cooper Mountain? Here you go, and then it gives you back its information and that sort of thing. Um, in the wider coding community, there's, um, I'll be sure to add some links to this later at, when we actually share the slides, but in the wider coding community, there's actually uh, quite a few libraries that are really good at this um, as well. Uh, there's Geocoder PHP, um, which does basically what Geocoder the module does, but just from a more code level standpoint. And the nice part about Geocoder PHP is that Geocoder the module um, supports probably like seven or eight different um, external APIs. Geocoder PHP the the library supports like twenty something, and does a lot of extra stuff for it. So. One of the things that I would like to see long term is Geocoder actually relying on that library versus this home co homegrown thing that we've built over the years, um, because that's hard hard to work with. Um, there's another library that I, I wrote that's on GitHub called Geocoder JS, which does the exact same thing but on the client side. Um, and so, so the client side is basically your browser is asking for the request versus your server. And that's really important when you're dealing with things like Google who rate limits you on how many requests you can ask per day per IP address. So if your server is, the, is only asking from one IP address, you get like 2,500 hits a day, which is probably okay for some applications, but not great if you have a lot of traffic. Um, whereas if you're doing a client side, you can spread that um, request around uh, to you know a wide variety of computers, and you tend not to run into um, rate limits until much much later. Yeah. So that's awesome. Can we get a link to the repo? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll actually just pull it up right now. Just uh, yeah. So if you go on GitHub.com, it's a uh, geocoder PHP. So it's geocoder PHP is the parent um, organization. And then uh, Geocoder JS is the um, library that does that. So, so. it still hooks up to, to, to these 20, 20 some APIs, external APIs, but, but executes it has on the, the client side. Right? Yeah, it executes on the client side. Unfortunately, it only connects to about three or four um, right now, but it's, um, and that's mainly because the initial work that we did was kind of establishing what that plugin architecture looks like. Um, but it's relatively easy to add that, um, add extra things. Uh, and right now it supports like the major ones. It supports Google, Bing, and uh, OpenStreetMap, so. Great. 
just as a solicitation, if this group is able to help out in any way, are you guys open to that? And, um, like, for instance, you mentioned that you'd love to see GeoCoder work on GeoCoder PHP. Mm -hmm. If we were able to help with our limited experience, would that be welcome? Or That would absolutely be welcome. I'm actually going to try to talk a little bit about, like, how you guys can help in general okay. at the end. So, uh, no, no worries. But, yes, the, the help is much, much needed. So, uh, uh, so after GeoCoder, uh, I... There are, so there's the open layers and leaflet modules. Um, both of those are also JavaScript libraries that are, that power Slippy Maps. So Slippy Map is basically like a Google map where um, the expectation is, is that you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can like slide a set of um, static image tiles across that, that make up your map across the thing. So when, when we say Slippy Map, it's basically just a Google map kind of thing. Um, but both open layers and leaflet are open source um, uh, JavaScript libraries that can use a wide variety of tile sets. And we'll talk a little bit more later about how we can actually make those tile sets and kind of get the look and feel and show the information that you need on um, data if you want it. Um, and then uh, the last module is the IP geolocation views and maps module, which is quite the mouthful. Uh, it is uh, basically the kitchen sink of modules uh, for the mapping stuff. Uh, so the top four modules are, are fairly limited in scope and what they do. Like, you know, we try to keep the amount of things that a particular module does to a minimum to keep it easy to maintain. Uh, what IP geolocation views and maps does is it adds a lot of niceties to, a, you know, not just the geofield um, stack, but some of the other mapping stacks that are available um, in Drupal. And so it, it does things like some really interesting views integration. It, um, you know, it allows you to do um, view searches where you can ask things like, uh, show me all the nodes or all the pieces of content on my site that are within five miles of my particular user. And it uses uh, the browser to ask, you know, hey, where are you? And then, you know, does that kind of search. Um, and it, I mean, it really does like a couple of dozen of really random, awesome, cool things that are, you know, in and of themselves not that great, but taken as a package, like there's, it's, it is really just the, the kitchen sink of that. Um, so I'm going to talk, I'm going to show a couple of things real quick and uh, with uh, some of the Drupal mapping modules, feel free to stop and ask, hey, Brandon, that doesn't make sense. What are you doing kind of thing? Um, and we can kind of go from there. This high altitude is crazy for talking. Yeah, yeah feel free to grab water and Right here. <laughs> Brought my own. <laughs> cool. So this is a um, content type that I created for this particular site called Basic Geofield. And this is about as bare bones as you can get on with Geofield. So we're going to say Copper Mountain is the node that I want. Uh, this is just a regular body field, so you can put whatever in it. Uh, down here is uh, my geo field, and uh, you'll notice that I'll have a latitude and longitude asked for it, and you'll notice that it's already pre-populated because I've set this particular one up uh, to ask, hey, you know, where are you? Um, normally on the, on the browser, it would ask you, there, um, so I'm currently in Chrome, there would be a little bar on the top that says, hey, do you want to share your... Um, location with this particular site. Uh, because I was testing this out this morning to make sure that it still worked, uh, I already did that. <laughs> so it, um, you know, so it already pre-populated my latitude and longitude. I can save it. And then it is hooked up to, uh, so Geofield does come with a bundled Google map implementation. Uh, it's very basic. It's basically there for um, sanity checks. Like, you know, does this work? Is this actually the location I want? That sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so that was really easy just to say like, hey, where am I? Here it is right there. Um, and so, uh, you know, we can change how that's displayed pretty easily through, um, through the display types for the view, view or for the, for the node. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Drupal, um, fields have three components to them. They have um, you know, the type of storage that they do. So that's the, um, like that's the field type itself. Um, there's how you add the information to your site, which is the uh, widget that's associated with it, and then there's how you display it, and that's the formatter. 
Um, and so you can, and so Geofill comes with quite a few different ways to set this up. Um, about half of these options here come bundled with Geofill itself. Uh, so well-known text um, is, you know, just it's a pretty basic database um, way of expressing a um, line or a point or whatnot. Um, GeoJSON is basically the same thing but in a JSON format and is really useful for um, a lot of uh, web applications and we'll kind of show some of that off later. Uh, the next three are pretty esoteric. Uh, KML is uh, Google Earth, K GPX is a GPS unit format. Um, Geohash is kind of interesting. It's a, it's a way to, um, for, who, does anyone not know what Apache Solar is? Cool. Uh, okay, so Apache Solar is basically a search engine um, indexing tool that you can tie into Drupal. Um, there's a, quite a few, there's, there's two main modules that you can use with that. There's Search API and Apache Solar. Um, but the benefit that um, Apache Solar gives you is that it's a, um, it allows you to do things like faceted searching. So if you've ever been to like Amazon and you look for, you know, let's say, well, here's an example. I, w I was playing frisbee golf up here, or disc golf up here uh, on the mountain a couple of days, or yesterday. Uh, lost two of my discs because I, I'm not a very good long distance thrower. Uh, so I came home, and, or went back to the uh, hotel, and was like, okay, well, I need to get some more discs. Uh, so, you know, I searched for my disc, and on the left-hand side on, um, on Amazon, you, you tend to have a bunch of, so if I just look for disc golf, um, they'll have, like, you know, the entire list. But on the left-hand side, it'll do things like by, filter by manufacturer, filter by color, filter by weight, filter by whatever. So that's what a faceted search is. It's basically being able to show, like, here's different pieces of metadata that's associated with your content. Um, fil be, let's be able to list those and then filter by that. And so Solar does that really, really well. Um, and so what geohashing is, is a way to store geospatial information inside solar that gives you the ability to say, show me everything that is within this particular range of uh, content. And it's, really, and it's set up in a way where it's really fast to index that and that sort of thing. Is solar linked to geospatial? Yes. Wow. Yeah, since uh, solar 4, I think, um, which is relatively recent, last year-ish or so. Um, so the, the trick with doing solar searches for geospatial stuff is that you can't ask questions like show me th every item that's within 50 miles of my particular location uh, or of a particular location but what you can ask are questions like show me the 50 closest things to this particular location and so it's a very, dis it's a very subtle difference but if you can live with that, then you can do some really interesting stuff with solar. Um, and then uh, just kind of looking at the other stuff. So open layers is a map. Um, so you know, I already showed you know the, the Google map. Uh, this is just another format for that. Uh, Leaflet's another display for it. Uh, I think Leaflet actually is broken right now. So Geofield is on Geo the uh, there's the original Geofield for Drupal 7, so Geofield 1.0, and then there's Geofield 2.0. And I don't think the leaflet module is quite updated yet, but they just recently, like this week, got a new maintainer, so that should come soonish. Um, one of the nice things that they have is a, and I can show this off for the open layers version of it. Uh, let's go to manage fields. We are going to edit the widget. Uh, so geocode from another field is, you know, basically you pick a field, um, any arbitrary field, and you can geocode from that. Um, the, the cool one to kind of show off is the open layers map. And so you can actually add your data in via a map. Uh, so let's say I want to show this off. I can just draw my point and say, you know what, I really want to be back home in D.C instead of Cooper Mountain, or Copper Mountain. And save it. And there we are. That's actually really close to my house. That's, <laughs> that's pretty good for being zoomed out so far. And can you do like line strings and other mm -hmm. geometry for that? Yep. Yeah, so there's three tools here. So that's the polygon, the line, and the point. 
So if I wanted to draw this instead, save it. It's right there. Yeah, and so the leaflet module, so in the leaflet world on the JavaScript side, there's a, it's actually very pluggable and extendable as well. Um, and there is a um, module, or there's a plugin for leaflet called leaflet draw, which basically does the same sort of thing. Um, in general, open layers is more fully featured, but a bit older, and so like it has some cruft that's involved with it. Leaflet is kind of the new hotness. It's what people like using for this kind of map stuff, and uh, so like uh, lots of things kind of come with that. Like it visually, it looks a little bit better. The UX is a little bit nicer. Um, like any like new trendy kind of thing is going to show up probably in Leaflet more so than Open Layers. Um, open Layers is not like.